the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's self-polishing glow coats present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by the King's Men, and music by Billy Mills. The show opens with I Love Louisa. talking with a man who had just had the floors in his house completely refinished. In fact, he had just paid the bill. This time, we're going to take care of our floors, he told me. We're taking your advice about protecting them regularly with Johnson's Wax. Well, that's advice I give very freely on this program, and you're all welcome to accept it and save yourself expensive refinishing charges. It's really remarkable how much punishment floors will stand when they're given an occasional coat of genuine Johnson's Wax. Besides the money-saving protection, Johnson's Wax offers two other major advantages. First, the glowing beauty it gives to all floors, furniture, and woodwork. And second, the way it saves you work all during the year. Be sure, however, that you get the original and genuine Johnson's Wax, available in paste, liquid, or cream wax form. time comes, a husband does one of two things. One, he goes away someplace. Two, he hangs around and gets in the way. The guy living at 79 Whistle Vista is type number two, as you'll see when we join Fibber McGee and Molly. Now, McGee, if you're not going to be any more help than this, I wish to take the afternoon off. Go to a movie or something. I might call Billy Mills and go bowling. Well, why don't you? I can't. Billy hates bowling. Well, why don't you get down to the cigar store? You and the other hangers-on down there haven't settled the world situation for a long time. Ah, uh, those mugs don't know what it's all about. They're too fat to fight and too wise to know anything and too dumb to catch on when I try to explain things to them. You being the authority, I suppose. Why not? I read the papers and study military tactics. All them zip do is stand around moaning about their tires. <laughs> Say, this tire shortage is certainly going to put the country back on its feet again. <laughs> I don't care. I like to walk. Remember last summer, Molly, when I was always planning to pack a lunch and get up early on some Sunday morning and take a long hike out into the country? Well, I remember you planning it, but you never went. (laughs) Well, I hate to go away and miss reading the Sunday paper. Well, you could have taken the Sunday paper with you. Oh, yeah? I know a guy that carried a Sunday paper two miles once. He's been bow-legged ever since. (laughs) (laughs) Well, now, if you're not going to help me with this house cleaning, I wish you'd go out someplace. Okay. uh... But now, listen... Comb your hair first. I just did. What'd you part it with? A course screw? <laughs> I'm just different than most good looking guys, Molly. Instead of curly hair and a straight part, I got straight hair and a curly part. <laughs> no kidding, Molly. I don't oh. think... what's the matter? Hurt your hand? Oh. Molly. What's the matter? McGee, my ring. My engagement ring. Huh? It's gone. Gone? Oh, my God. Hey, maybe you took it off to wash your hands. I never take it off. Oh, dear. My beautiful engagement ring. It'll break my heart if I lose that now. Well, where did you see it last? Right here on my left hand. Oh, dear, if I only... No, I mean, where were you? I had it this morning, and I haven't been out of the house. Now, let me see. First, I built a fire here in the fireplace. Well, maybe you dropped it in the fireplace. Oh, heavenly days. Scrape the ashes all out and sift them, McGee. I look upstairs, and then you get the vacuum cleaner and we... Oh, dear. Come in. Oh, hello, Mrs. Uppington. Well, how do you do, my dear? Hey, Mr. McGee. Hi, Uppy. Now, watch where you plant those big... I mean, uh, watch where you step, Uppy. <laughs> we lost a diamond ring around here someplace. My engagement ring, Abigail. It's missing. Oh, how terrible, my dear. And it was such a dainty little diamond, too. <laughs> well, I tell you, it isn't the ring so much as it is the sentiment, Abigail. I remember the night McGee gave it to me, just like it was yesterday. There he was. Kneeling in front of the... Oh, never mind. <laughs> Up, 
Dorothy ain't interested in how. Oh, but I am, Mr. McGee. Oh, it's simply too, too romantic. <laughs> Tell me, my dear, after he put the ring on your finger, did he kiss your hand? Oh, sure. <laughs> I think he was going to, Abigail, but before he had a chance, my father came in with a glass of elderberry wine for each of us and said, congratulations, children. <laughs> ah, grand old man, too, your father. Must have waited outside that door for two hours and never spilled a drop. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you were married right away, my dear. I never did believe in long engagements. Neither did McGee. Particularly after we went into vaudeville. <laughs> you know, we never played a theater more than three days. <laughs> oh, then, were you in the theater? Oh, you. Oh, how utterly fascinating. <laughs> Uh, I was an actress once, Nathan. Oh, Whoopi. I remember you. Didn't you used to have an iron jaw act uh, swinging on a rope uh, by your teeth and waving a little American flag? <laughs> now, please, Mr. McGee. I was never in Vaudeville. I played only Shakespearean roles. Juliet, you know. Oh, we played Joliet, too. <laughs> Joliet, and then we went to Kankakee and Decatur. No, 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 no. Not Joliet. Juliet, my dear. Oh, oh. oh what fun. My leading man fell in love with me. <laughs> oh, poor Dirty Jarvis. He <laughs> Jarvis? Yes. Yes, his name was John P. Jarvis. But I always called him T. Jarvis. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> well, whatever happened to old... I mean, uh, where... Well, uh, I don't like to be nosy up there. Oh. But to... <laughs> he went away to make his fortune. Oh. But I've never seen him since. Well, didn't he leave any message when he left out again? Yes. Yes, he left a note saying that someday he would return. And when he did, he... Oh! Good heavens. I wonder. You wonder what? He said that some night he would return... And toss a pebble at my window. Oh, my. Yes, of course. Oh, but it couldn't. But still, I... Oh, my honest, have this investigated at work. <laughs> well, if it was him that came back and threw a rock through her window, that lets you out, McGee. It lets me out of more than that. What do you mean? I mean this diamond ring of yours. I've been afraid. I mean, I am afraid, uh... Maybe I walked in my sleep again and... Uh, are you sure you had it on this morning? Yes, I am. Well, that's a load off my mind. I was afraid I'd got up in the night, swiped your rock, and heaved it through somebody's window. Well, come on, let's sip the ashes. Oh, Get the vacuum cleaner, Molly. We'll get this house to going over like it never has. Here, take my coat. Well, I tell you, it's around someplace. 
Nothing is really lost till you quit looking for it, you know. Is that true? Certainly. Why? And I lost a couple of kneecaps. <laughs> Since I started putting on weight, I've quit looking for them. Oh, boy, am I tired. Well, I certainly appreciate your help, dearie. Now, listen, you take it easy and let me finish the house cleaning. I'll find my ring somewhere. No, sir. I'm going to turn this house upside down and shake it if I have to. Hand me that carpet sweeper. All right, darling. Here. And keep a sharp eye out in the corners along the baseboard. Yeah. Heavenly days, my left hand feels positively indecent without that ring on it. Mm -hmm. I know how you feel, Molly. I lost my wristwatch once. And every time anybody'd look at my naked wrist, I'd blush clear up to my elbow. <laughs> Listen, dearie, be sure to look under the edges of the rug. Won't, Don't worry. Old Eagle Island is on the job, will Oh, I wonder who that should be. Look out the window. Huh? Is there an armored delivery truck out there? No. Well, then it can't be the grocer man with my two pounds of sugar. <laughs> Come in. Good day, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. Oh, hi, Olivia. What you all bundled up in the fur cap and mittens for? I regret to say that I neglected my business affairs today and yielded to the temptation to go out with a small party of friends. Oh. Uh, we have been boob sledding. No, no, no. Uh, you mean bob sledding. With the frantic little group of sportsmen I was with, Mrs. McGee, it is boob sledding. <laughs> they are imbued with the peculiar idea that to see how close one can steer a sled to a moving streetcar is the height of hilarity. <laughs> well, it is kind of fun if that was with you. Yes, I imagine it would appeal to you too, McGee. You are the type that rocks rowboats and wears ladies' hats at parties. <laughs> Why, he does not. He always wears a lampshade. <laughs> Get a much bigger laugh with a lamp shade, Latrice. <laughs> that killed him. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. I should try to remember that the next time. I'm... Oh, uh, but am I intruding? Were you cleaning house, Mrs. McGee? Well, yes. And then I lost my diamond engagement ring, Mr. Mayor. So we know it's around here someplace. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, do you mind if I take a look around? I'll be glad to have you, Latrice. Go ahead. Well, I don't see it anywhere. <laughs> you couldn't have found a flat car and a phone booth in that length of time. <laughs> Uh, my eyesight is very penetrating, McGee. Oh. In fact, I was quite a student of mesmerism at one time. What mesmerism? Uh, mesmerism. <laughs> Hypnotism. I uh, like this. Look me in the eye, McGee. Which one? Either one. Oh. Now relax. You are slowly coming under my dump. Hmm? You have no will of your own. I've been telling him that for years, and I know that. Please. <laughs> McGee. All right, McGee. When I snap my fingers, you are completely subject to my order. There. You see, Mrs. McGee, his mind is a blank. Look at that glassy stare. That's the way he always looks when he does crossword puzzles. <laughs> Isn't it, McGee? Isn't it, McGee? McGee! Well, heavenly days, he is hypnotized. Oh, of course he is. Watch this. McGee, you are an Airedale. A big, brown Airedale. Speak. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Look at him trying to wag his tail. <laughs> No, 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 get down. Stop jumping up on me. Down, Jorge, down. Oh, he bit me in the leg. Let me out of here. Well, aren't you going to hypnotize him first? Oh, you'll come out of it, Jorge. I don't want to hear it. Get away from me. You, you, you. Boy, I sure fooled him, didn't I, Molly? <laughs> you fooled me, too. I was about to call the drugstore for some flea powder. <laughs> Well, I had to get rid of that guy some way so I could get back to work. Some ass, huh? It was wonderful. It was so realistic. I... McGee, pull in your tongue and stop that panting. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm tired. This carpet sweeper works awful hard. Well, use the vacuum. Okay, plug in the cord, will you? All right. Thanks. What's the matter now? Motor won't start. McGee, have you been tinkering with it? Why should I tinker with the vacuum cleaner motor? I don't know, but have you? That's a silly question to think that I... McGee, have you? Oh, you mean with the vacuum cleaner motor. <laughs> yeah, come to think of it, I have. I took it apart to fix it. Well, couldn't you get it back together again, right? Ordinarily I could, but I took it apart on my workbench down in the basement, and I already had the lawnmower apart, and I didn't know which part went back in which. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't have my sewing machine down there, too. I did. <laughs> but I kept the parts to that separate. Well, good for you. Yeah. I didn't want them to get mixed up with the works out of your electric mixer. What? <laughs> Heavenly 
Dave. Please, McGee, will you stop experimenting with the appliances? Well, I was just trying to... Something is all. I thought if I fit a couple of little paddles to the mixing machine, I could use it for our Ford motor next summer. <laughs> My sewing machine. What were you trying to make out of that? A pencil sharpener? No, I... Hey, I bet you got something oh. there. I bet if I attach the razor blade... No, to no, no. No, no, please. Go get the carpet sweeper and sweep these rugs. Don't forget, I have a diamond ring laying around here somewhere. Don't worry, I'll find it. I'm the guy... Hello, Fibber. Hello, Molly. What's cooking, good looking? <laughs> I've lost my diamond ring, Mr. Wilcox. Yeah, be careful where you step, Harlow. We like mashed carrots, but not in the rug. <laughs> <laughs> well, gee, that's tough, Molly. Are you sure you lost it around here? Yeah, absolutely. I always wear it right here on the third finger of my left hand. Hey, wait a minute. Let me see. Now, what good will it do to look at her hand? You're just hanging around the fairgrounds after the balloon's gone up. <laughs> hey, look at that hand. What's the matter with it? Nothing. It's lovely. Why, it's hands like yours that make the best possible advertising for Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Oh, my. And glow coat is a beauty treatment for your linoleum, too. Oh, I have 20 minutes floor facial. Pour out little glow coat, spread it around, and presto, in 20 minutes or less, it sparkles with pride and joy. Harlow, <laughs> you amaze me. <laughs> How so, Joe? <laughs> Why do you keep up your enthusiasm? For seven years now and more, you've been whooping and hollering about Johnson's glow coat. Don't you ever let down? What do you mean, let down? After only seven years, do you realize how many hundreds of years, B.G.? B.G.? Before glow coat. Oh. How many hundreds of weary years women spent trying to keep their homes clean and bright with bunches of grass and crude brooms and dirty scrub brushes, the aches and pains and toil and... Oh, you wouldn't understand. Well, I hope you find your diamond, Molly. Thanks, Mr. <laughs> He certainly loves his work, doesn't he, Diddy? Yeah, you know what he did? He what? went down to the Red Cross yesterday and gave him a pint of glow coat. <laughs> told him it was his life blood. Oh. Well, let's say find that diamond, Molly. Move that chair, will you, so I can sweep on All the right. Ain't none of there any place. Mm, you know what I can't understand is how that ring ever come off your finger. I thought it was on so tight. Well, it was, but whenever I worry, I lose weight. What are you worrying about? Well, wouldn't you worry if you lost the diamond ring? <laughs> yeah, I guess I would at that. Oh, well, I'm going to keep playing. Oh, there, kid. Just stopped in to say goodbye. Why, Mr. Oldtimer? Where are you going? Join the Navy, daughter. I'm an old salt, full of the old pepper. Eight barrels and all's well. What? Believe the wheel, the life boy, and look out. Hey, up the top side, all the ships coming. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Wait a minute, old timer. Hey, they won't take you in the Navy. You're too old. Well, you'd lay an awful egg in a crow's nest. <laughs> yes, that's so. Well, by John Paul Jones, Johnny, I've got my mind made up to join the Navy, and I'm going to do it. I already told the girl. Oh. I says, chicken. I says, <laughs> get off my arm and make way for an eagle. I but now look, Mr. Old Time, you're way, way over the age limit. You can't get in if they won't take you. Then I'll stow away, daughter. I'll send you a snapshot of me on a destroyer. You ever get seasick, old timer? Oh, good gravy, Johnny. Why'd you have to mention that? <laughs> oh, that spoils everything. And I know I'd look cute in a sailor suit, too. <laughs> I bet you would, too. <laughs> Indeed you would. It's the navy blue that makes sailors like you, and it's sailors like you that make the navy blue. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, daughter, but that ain't the way I hear it. <laughs> the way I hear it, one for the says, <laughs> You know what the Germans are going to do next in Russia? No, says Caterpillar. Well, what's the answer? Daughter, there's a fellow with a little Charlie Chaplin mustache who'd like to know that, too. <laughs> well, I'm still going to try and get in the Navy, kids. <laughs>
And though I'm far away, I still can hear them say, Back where I got it. 
Boy, am I wore to another. I got more creeks in the cricket and more pains in the greenhouse. My back is so... I'm almost ready to give up. And you know, it just breaks my heart. I... Well, for goodness sake, how nice everything looks to you. Boy, it ought to look nice. I've lost seven pounds in weight, two inches in height, and a lot of interest in life. Well, now you just sit down and rest, dearie. You've really worked hard today, and I appreciate it. Yeah, what good does it do? With your ring still missing? Well, I'll be... Look! What's that? What's what? What are you staring at? Your hand. Hey, your finger. Your ring, there it is. Why, you must be seeing things. My hand is as bad. No, 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 no. Your right hand. You got your ring on the other hand. Well, for... Oh. Oh, McGee, thank you, darling. Thank you for finding it. <laughs> what do you mean, finding it? You had it all the time. If I'm not the worst... No, I remember. I put it on the other hand this morning to remind me of something. Remind you of what? Never mind. It seems so silly now. Huh. Well, I want to know. I got a right to know. And I can keep from collapsing just long enough for you to tell me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this, is, this is so ridiculous. <laughs> well, why did you put the ring on the other hand? Well, it was to remind me to ask you to help me with the house cleaning today. <laughs> Come tramping across your kitchen floor with wet and soggy feet, your linoleum needs extra protection. Give it that protection with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat and see what a difference it makes in your daily work and in the appearance of your kitchen. As a matter of fact, it's when your floors get this extra punishment that you can see what a wonderful polish glow coat really is. It has a flexible film, which means that it wears evenly without chipping. It has a lasting luster. Gives floors sparkling beauty that brings out and preserves the fresh colors of the linoleum. And glow coat is economical because a little goes a long way. Glow coat is self-polishing, needs no rubbing or buffing. You simply apply and let dry. But for glow coat results, be sure you get the one and only Johnson self-polishing glow coat. Hey, Molly, you know what? You know what? I made up my mind I'm going to quit joking about not using our car so much. You know, this is a serious business. I think our support of these wartime restrictions ought to be... Absolutely, uh... Uh, Yeah. Good night. (laughs) Good night. The War Department has just announced new revised regulations for training aviation cadets. Under these new rules, men between 18 and 26, married or single, with or without college education, are now eligible for the Army Air Corps. More than two million more men may now join this exciting branch of the service and play an important part in America's all-out victory program. How to join? See your local Army recruiting station immediately. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night.